So we understand about the mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures. In heterogeneous water, colloids, water, suspensions, emulsions, etc. Now, it is the task to know that how to separate the components in the heterogeneous mixtures. Yes, of course, we have many methods you will learn in your lower classes. The methods like hand picking, sewing, filtrations, etc. In addition to them, we have some more methods I am going to explain you now with which also we can separate the components of heterogeneous mixtures. In that row, the first one is sublimation. So, separation of components in heterogeneous mixture by the method called sublimation. I think you know about sublimation. Sublimation is a phase change from solid to gas or gas to solid. That means in this process, the component what we want to get, that component maybe goes to gaseous state or maybe from gaseous state to solid state. Let us see here what type of state we are getting using the sublimation method. So, in the sublimation method, I want to separate the ammonium chloride from the common salt. So, what I have done, I have taken China dish. In this, I have added some tablespoons of common salt and ammonium chloride and made a mixture. Now, I have taken a funnel and put it in inverted position on the china dish and the other end here this is closed with a cotton. Now see, well, see this diagram you can understand that I am supplying some heat to the system so that the temperature of the system will increase. Now what happens? If you observe carefully what you understand that initially you will get some gaseous state of ammonium chloride on the walls of the funnel mm -hmm. and keep on observing that after some time those vapors which are in gaseous state converts into solidified ammonium chloride and form the solidified ammonium chloride on the walls of the funnel. In that way you are separating the in the mixture of common salt ammonium chloride the ammonium chloride as a solid substance on the walls of the funnel. So, here the sublimation why the title is given that because the ammonium chloride first it comes to the vapor state which is gas state and then it converts into solid state directly from gas state to solid state and forming the solid ammonium chloride on the walls of the funnel. In that way we can separate the mixture, separate the components of a mixture. Now, see the second method where you can separate the components of the mixture which is called evaporation. Here what I have done I have taken a beaker, filled it with water up to a certain amount and on the beaker I have put a wash glass, on the wash glass I put some ink and now I started giving the heat to the water solution. So, what happens? When you heat the water for some time, you know that water gets the temperature, rises the temperature and starts boiling and gets the vapor and that vapor goes to the wash glass and if you observe the wash glass carefully, you can see that in the ink, what is the amount of water you are having, that water also vaporizes and escapes to the atmosphere, escapes the environment, leaving dye on the wash glass. So, here what we have done? So, we have separated the components of ink. Ink is a mixture of dye and water. And that water escaped the environment leaving the dye. And it is escaped because of vaporization. That is why uh, I put the word called evaporation. Of course, I, I use the word vaporization, but I am buying, keeping the word evaporation. There is a small difference between evaporation and vaporization. Vaporization happened at 100 degree centigrade, which is the boiling point of water. But if this process happened at all temperatures, or you can say below 100 degree centigrade. And if that happens below 100 degree centigrade, we can say it is evaporation. So, using the evaporation method, we separated dye and water in ink. In this example, when I said that ink is separated as the dye and water, or leaving the dye and water is evaporated. Now, coming to dye, how do you know that in dye, what type of colors you have? How would you separate the colors of a, pick, uh, colors of a paint. 
how do you know that how many colors are existing in a dye and this is you can know if you follow a, another method called chromatography chromatography chrome chromo means colors chromatography means the method which which will reveal the colors in a particular solution so in chromatography also many methods are there so basically in chromatography we will see the different colors in different solutions or we can separate the colors in dye we understand that solutions are homogeneous and heterogeneous in homogeneous we have different types of compounds are mixing in heterogeneous also different types of compounds are mixing but we have another category this is also mixture but it is a mixture of liquids when you mix two different types of liquids sometimes the two mix two liquids are mixed together uniformly sometimes they don't so taking that into consideration we have category one is miscible liquids and second one is immiscible what is miscible liquids miscible liquids means when when one liquid is completely dissolved in another liquid is called miscible like example alcohol plus water if you mix them alcohol were both completely dissolved with each other miscible liquid immiscible liquid when one liquid is not uniformly or completely dissolved with another liquid it's called immiscible an example kerosene plus water oil plus water for example for immiscible liquids after understanding about miscible liquids and immiscible liquids now we have to know that how can you separate those liquids this is one case study here here the it is separation of immiscible liquids in immiscible liquids i want to separate a liquid solution of kerosene and water you know that it's a heterogeneous mixture where kerosene do not completely mix with water but i want to separate them how do we separate see this diagram carefully is a funnel in this funnel you filled water with kerosene as the kerosene is less dense is floating on the water okay now the funnel is connected to stop cock where the liquid doesn't flow because stop now and there is a outer outer tube now what happens if you release the stop cock slowly giving small narrow opening to the stop cock then that water drops through this to a container so this is a container so the water slowly drops into the container here what is the method we have used why you set up the apparatus like this? this is based on the method called density you know that less dense to material will float on the high dense to materials and water is high dense than a kerosene that's why water as a high dense heavier heavier substance it will go to the bottom and it will come as drops into the container leaving kerosene in that way we can separate the immiscible liquids now this is the one method for separating the components of miscible liquids here miscible liquids are acetone and water both are completely dissolved now you have to separate acetone and water now see this method is called distillation in this method what we have done we have taken a distillation flask which is filled with acetone plus water solution which is kept on a bunsen burner arrangement so that you can give you can supply the heat to the solution now now this flask is fixed with a retarding stand with a clamp arrangement and the flag flask is again added to thermometer to know the temperature of it now this 
flask has an outlet. This outlet is connected to another tube with a water condenser. Water condenser which will condense the gas or the vapors into liquid state. And that liquid is collected into the container. Now here what happens? When you supply the heat to the acetone and water solution for some time, then what happened? The acetone vapors will move in the upward direction because of less dense two materials, they will move in the upward direction and through outlet they will pass us through this tube. When they are passing through this area, because the water condenser, that acetone vapor cools down, converts into liquid state and that liquid acetone droplets will drop into the container. In that way, for, for some time if you observe, you can collect the acetone in this container using the distillation method so that you are separating acetone from the acetone water solution. So in this method, it is only possible whenever the two liquids have boiling points which are very far from each other. That means the difference between the boiling points are high, then this method is applicable. If the boiling point of the two liquids are very close to each other, then you cannot use the same method, but you can modify the method which is called fractional distillation method. Using that fractional distillation method, you can separate the two solutions, two liquids in the solution which are having very nearer boiling points. So far we understand that what is mixture, what are solutions, what are saturated, unsaturated solutions, homogeneous, heterogeneous solutions. But what, the, what are all the solutions the mixes we discussed? All the solutions are physically combined. But some mixtures which are not physically combined, but they are chemically combined. And can you separate them? Do you have those mixtures where you have chemically combined? Yes. Those are called, those you can say compounds in chemistry. Take an example. You have a container, inside the container you have a copper sulfate solution. It's a copper sulfate solution. Now take an aluminum foil. This aluminum foil keep inside the copper sulfate solution for some time. So what happens? If you observe carefully, the aluminum foil is after some time the aluminum, aluminum foil is coated with copper leaving the solution without any with without any color so what has happened here do you think that there's a physical reaction happened no here in the component copper sulfate solutions the components are separated yes sulfate and copper both are separated but not because of the previous method what you discussed is it because of chemical reaction between copper sulfate and aluminum and, and that aluminum got a copper coating over it and this copper this copper is called compound so some mixtures we have where you can separate the components of the mixture using chemical reactions also so then what what is the definition you can give for compound so compound is also a component in the solution which can be separated due to chemical reaction. That's what definition of compound. So I had told you earlier that uh, compound is not the component which are physically combined. Compound is a component where you have chemically combined. Let us see some variations between mixtures and compounds. Mixtures. Compounds combine together, but no new compound is formed. Exactly. No new compound is formed in mixtures. Compounds. Elements react to form new compound. That means, if you take aluminum as one element, copper is another one. If you combine them, what will happen? They are both copper sulfate, aluminum, aluminum foil kept in the copper sulfate. The copper is separated from the sulfate, so the copper sulfate solution. And copper forms the aluminum foil. So like that, new compounds are formed. Take another example, hydrogen and sulphate. If you come, both are two different compounds having different properties. If you combine them, you get hydrogen sulphate. 
and then hydrogen sulfate doesn't have the same properties like hydrogen sulfate. It has got new properties. This is what the compound characteristic. Second one, it shows the properties of constituent substances. Yes, of course. Even though the mixture consists of uh, the components, each component has their, their different properties. But here, as you got new substance, and this new substance entirely have different properties. Now, we come to the last stage of this chapter. If you see this flow chart, you can easily understand that what are the properties we are discussed and what are the subtopics we have learned from this chapter. So, we understand it what is matter, matter in the form of solid, liquid or gas and is matter mainly classified into two types, pure substances and mixtures and the pure substances are the two categories, elements and compounds. See the elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances, means once you come to the element, element is element only. If you come to copper, you, you can't break the copper into some another constituents, it's not possible. Similarly, oxygen, iron, hydrogen, they are the elementary stage, you cannot divide into another constituent states. But compounds, yes, can be broken down into elements. Say copper sulfate solution, it's a compound, you can divide them into copper and sulfate. Take uh, water, can be divided into number of salts, methane, sugar, so all them can be broken into its their constituents. Now coming to mixture. Mixture, we discussed two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous. In homogeneous, we see sugar in water, salt in water, homogeneous mixing of solutions, water and alcohol, so they are dissolved completely, uniformly throughout it. Heterogeneous, they can't be dissolved uniformly, they can't be mixed uniformly throughout it, like sand and salt. If you mix them, you can mix them, but sand is sand, salt is salt only, they don't change their properties. Sugar and salt and water and oil, so they cannot be dissolved completely or cannot be combined uniformly throughout it. So in that way, this chapter explain you about what are mixtures, what are solutions, what is solute, what is solvent, what are elements, compounds and what are homogeneous, heterogeneous and what are, what you say that, uh, elements and compounds.